What's up, party people in the building? <laughs> you sleep in your diamonds, Vivica. If I get you drunk the night before, then it's <laughs> What we laughing about, ladies? What we laughing about? Uh, cocktails of queens. And some Fancy Mondays. We have a lot to be grateful for. I'm grateful for this pina colada, ladies. OK. Let's get it popping. Let's uh, get it, girl. Let's do it. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's your girl Claudia Jordan. Welcome to Cocktails with Queens. We've been looking forward to this all week to get back at you. Now you know what it is and what we're about to do. And with my favorite homegirls, Vivica A. Fox, Lisa Ray, and Selena Johnson. And tonight, we are dishing about the hot topics that everybody is talking about. And we have a lot to talk about in this show because a lot of people are just out there just making these major mistakes. All right, ladies, let's get into it. <laughs> Queens, how y'all feeling tonight? And yes, I'm a little turned up because I got the red cup tonight. I love it, the red cup. Yes, and to our, our, our fabulous hostess with the most is Claudia Jordan with the red cup. Wow. Way to start the show off. I got my usual Pinot Noir from L.A. I got a little P, too. I got Pina Colada. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because I'm drinking ladies today because I'm still celebrating my birthday. Yes, wow. <laughs> Let's get into those pictures though, Miss Lisa Wright McCoy, down mm. to the swimsuit pictures on your Instagram. Thank I was you. like, bad. Oh, she was sure. very good. They had the over 50 bathing suit challenge, you know what I mean? And okay. I was like, okay. Hey, Oh, okay. you okay. do a picture on your birthday. That's just you know. Oh, oh. Yes, come on through, <laughs> Diamond. It's a great grown woman. Yes, or ain't never looked like yes, that. Yes, honey. Look, Diamond has turned like, into a marvelous marquee. I seen J Lo. I seen um, 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 Mary J Blige. Like everybody was doing theirs, and then everybody was like, "Well, you know, you got to do yours." And I was like. And at first I was like, I don't want to feel like working, honey. I've had my natural hair. I put that hat on. I ain't got no nails on. I was like, I, take this picture. Take this picture. Oh, that's good. So, so Lisa Ray, in the, in the picture, in the picture Thank you. very beautiful pictures. I see you were, you were spread eagle and, and you look fantastic. <laughs> I mean, I got to spread them some kind of way, don't I? Oh, yeah, you spread them. You spread them nice. Did, did you get I any? I love y'all. Did you get any birthday for a reason, though? Okay. I mean, yeah, the reason was for the picture taken. <laughs> I mean, for after, after the picture. I mean, was the picture a thirst trap? Well, not a thirst trap, but a trap to get able to have a real reason of the leg opening. Did, did you get you some, Lisa Ray? Folks that was like, good Lord, honey, close your legs, because woo. And it was just like, hey, is that going to help <laughs> the situation? <Okay. laughs> I, I, I see, I see, I see. I see. I see it. No one's she ain't, No one's answering my question. I want to know, Lisa Ray. Did you get some for your birthday? Mm. I'm looking back. <laughs> Who back there? Who in the room? Who that? Who that? Who that? Who that? Who that? Who that, who that who? <laughs> She's looking at the picture like, is there somebody? <laughs> <in> the <laughs> <You know? laughs> She's smiling. She's smiling. That tell you right there. You can always She's tell a woman. When things are going oh, just yeah. right with the smile oh, and the twinkle yeah. in the eye. Oh, yes, the on board. Let's do it. Uh oh, here we go. Come on. All right, we're gonna leave you alone for right now, but we we we're gonna pry. We you know we, we your girls, we're gonna stay in your business because we I love can you. have some kind of you. island man doing something. Well, that's right. Okay. What's we'll everybody drinking? T- oh, I already asked that question. My bad. Uh, I've been drinking. I threw you um, off, the girl. <laughs> you did. I, listen. I've been drinking. But Claudia, all of a sudden, you're in the dark. Uh, is it too dark? Hold on. Let me fix this. I oh, okay. Like, I was like, wait a minute, baby. I, I, I was making sure I wasn't tripping. I was like, did we? Yeah, because it's you, okay. It still it looks fine, you, though, Claudia. FYI, yeah. right there is good. Yeah. If, uh, if it wasn't for you not being home, I'd have been like, you ain't paid a bill. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> all right, ladies. The lights got turned off. Let's let's hop into some hot topics, shall we? Yes. Um, big story. We've been covering this for 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 months, actually. Uh, breaking news: R. Kelly has been found guilty by a federal jury today in a sex trafficking trial, following decades of numerous allegations of sexual assault and misconduct involving young women and children. Now, Kelly was convicted on nine charges that were based on the accusation that he ran a criminal enterprise compromised of managers and assistants beneath him who helped Kelly meet young women and girls for his sexual desires. Now, following the verdict, R. Kelly's defense lawyer, Devereaux Kanick, says he's sure that they will be uh, appealing the sentence after he's been found guilty in the racketeering case. What are your thoughts on this update and for R. Kelly to get this, you know, to take this big loss? 
we knew he was going to. We absolutely knew that this was going to come to an end. I don't think so much that he thought so because he just kept doing it. You know what I mean? And kept risking it. You know what I mean? But it started long time ago. And I guess when you get used to something, you don't get caught, then you start feeling yourself. And most celebrities do. Most men do when they get away with a lot of things. And the parents came around and was like, uh-uh, not no more, not mine. Cause I'm standing up for mine because I'm on tail. I'm on, you know, and you know, we've been waiting for it since he got locked up and see what they were going to do and what was going to be able to stick, you know? And now and it all stuck. <laughs> all nine counts. Eight to it, say it. You know? I was like, wow, everything. They're like everything. Yeah. Everything. And well, I, so, I think Selena, that's hard to kind of appeal everything. I mean, I guess you're less in the sentence if, if you get, you know, lucky, but I just think that they had a lot of, of proof, you know, and they had yeah. a lot of witnesses that came through and they had a lot of uh, parents to testify as well. You know, they got videotape and we've been hearing about videotapes for Forever. years. Forever. That started yeah. it all. Exactly. Selena, Selena, you, you work with them before. Well, what are your thoughts on this being that, you know, you, you had, a, you, you knew them and what are your thoughts on this? That it's kind of, well, I guess come to an end until the appeal happens, but what do you think? Um, you know, honestly, like, you know, like everybody said, you know, we've been following this situation and, you know, I've said so many things on it, but the one thing that I just, I I'm sad guys, um, sad. sad all around. Like it's sad for the women, of course, but I'm sad for him too. You know, um, a, a young boy that was victimized that ended up victimizing others, you know, is paying for the, you know, he's paying for what happened to him and what, what he did to others. Yeah. And it's just like, man, all this, all this music, all this legacy, his kids, um, you know, his ex-wife and, you know, all, all of the people um, that were around him that uh, maybe didn't know, you know, what was going on. And then just, it's just very, no, I'm have to stop you right there. No, don't stop me because I got to finish. <laughs> it's just, it's very, it's, it's just very sad. Like, I'm not talking about didn't know what was going on. I'm talking about like that didn't see stuff, you know, like you and I, you know, we went, it wasn't like we, we were sitting there watching stuff happening. You know what I'm saying? It was very shocking to see those um, lifetime specials and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like when, we, when I saw that, I was like, oh my God. You know, That's we right. were walking around, walking around these this man and not knowing nothing that was going on like that. You know what I'm saying? So it's just real sad. Like the whole legacy, everything. He like jammed his whole life up. He jammed up his whole catalog. It's just it's it's really messed up. So and I know it's personal for you because we yes. are personal friends with Rob. You know, yeah, what I mean? like, like it's, I grew up with him, so I know. Right. So it, it hit hard. It hits close to home. It's home. different. It's you know? it's. It's not just good. You went to jail. It's like, dang. Yep. And it's oh, so unfortunate because those people you were talking about that that be in your camp that help facilitate it, they work for you. So it's almost like their job. And even if they turn the other cheek, it's like, will he really listen? Because when you're the boss, it's only so much your sister can buck up and say to you, really, you know, your public. Your you're Absolutely. Right. You're kind of like, yeah. well, look, look, I heard you say it once. I heard you say it twice. Don't say it again. I think society like, oh. has it. I think society has a huge problem with holding account uh, celebrities, famous people, and, and and people that are rich accountable. And if we can benefit us in any way to keep our mouth shut, we are. We do. There's no way that all those people that you know were around him, y'all may not have known because he wasn't going to share that with y'all sisters because you you guys have integrity. He's not going to share that with you. But there's people around him that were totally fine with assisting this man. And the sad thing with the story, yes. Uh, this man create, committed a lot of crimes against a lot of kids and, and young and young women. Um, there was a crime committed against him that that was never uh, uh, addressed, and it allowed him to become a monster. And in the black community, we have got to stop, you know, yeah. making this thing so taboo and not believing our sons and our daughters when they say an uncle, a sister, a mother, a father touched us. And we got to knock that shit up. We got to cut that off. We got to cut it and out. And we got to rise above because some parents was like having their 16 year old daughter stay out. And it's like at 16, at 15, like why wasn't you knocking on the door going, get your ass out of there and come bring your ass home. That, that too, so many doing. facets. It's so many facets and levels to this whole thing. It's like, everybody could be responsible. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like so it's much deep. responsibility. It's, it's real deep. And it's yeah. just, it's just really, it's just really, it's really sad for me to see all of that legacy and all that work 
and all of that love that we created, that we, we um, accumulated for him and his music and what he did to music. And now none of that matters anymore. Oh, yeah. that music. He's Allegedly. facing up, last question, he's facing up to how many years, y'all? They didn't say that. 10, yet. They, yeah. 10 minimum. 10 minimum. And, and I think it's a lot more. It was nine life. layers of charges. Yeah, no, it's, it's 10 minimum. And then he could get 10 to life. But he also mm. has charges in Illinois and somewhere Dang. else. Dang. Oh, he, like go. he hasn't even been tried for. Uh, so, Kelly, and, we and feel for you for what you've been through as a, when you were a child. But we a lot of us have been touched, molested, raped, been victims of sexual assault. And we can't use that as an excuse to victimize young black girls and, and, and boys. Let's move on because, uh, listen, we'll cover it. I know. Again. I know. I'm like, I need okay, to come on. Okay, Kelly Price has uh, finally addressed why she went MIA from a uh, family and shared the sad story about her being hospitalized because of COVID. At one point during her hospital stay, she was pronounced medically dead. Um, she did make a video that we can't show right now, but Price also cleared up the fact that she was never missing despite some of her family insisting she had vanished without a trace. Kelly said she merely isolated herself as she recovered from COVID and was avoiding her family who she, sa she says she doesn't routinely stay in touch with anyways. Mm. What are your thoughts on Kelly's update? I didn't know that. and I, I didn't know that part. What wow, do you think? That's that interesting. That's a def definitely interesting way because they put out a whole like 911 alert, like she's missing. She hasn't spoken to her kids. You know, it made everybody like, eh, who? Mm -hmm. Kelly Price? Yeah. Kelly, Kelly, right. And then they went back and it was like last heard from July 9th. Like all of a sudden it just made your heart stop because, you know, we Kelly's like, fam. Mm -hmm. And so He's you like, you know, and then that makes you then look at the, the the husband or her little fiance, whoever he is, not I don't mean little, but her guy, like, what you doing? Especially after this little, you know, we didn't have this little case with a couple of people going missing and disappearing, right. this that, and the third. It just you go there, like, oh, come on now, not Kelly. Yeah. I was DMing her and I was on her timeline. Like Word. Kelly was good. Like, I think everyone I do like that people did join in, especially on the heels of Jamie Petito that was found dead, the, the little blonde girl that was found dead. And I do like that everyone did kind of like rally around it. Like, yes, is she okay? Selena, what do you think? Because I know you know her as well, right? Um, yeah. See, okay, it's a couple of things because it's just it's also a lot of facets to this story. Um, mm -hmm. first of all, we gotta let people heal the way that they want to heal and like how they want to heal and however that that goes. For me personally, I have two sisters. Um, if I flatlined, now this is just my personal opinion. If I flatlined, whether I'm, whether I, they could, I, it, it's nothing they could have done to me that I would not have talked to them. If I, and I came back to life that I would not have said something to them about my whereabouts. She said that they knew where she was. I'm going to take her word for it. Um, the biggest thing in all of this is that I'm just very excited, well, not excited, but I'm very happy to know that she's okay. Yeah. Um, the problem with all of this and her not coming forth, even though I feel like people should heal the way that they should, but we are not in those times anymore. 700,000 people died from COVID. Okay. So it's not far fetched to want to know where she is. She's a queen in our community and we are losing black people left and right. Chadwick Bozeman, DMX, Diz Markey, Michael K. Williams, like the list goes on and on. Every time you turn around, someone is passing away and we were nervous and scared. And so in this, in this uh -huh. moment, you know, we really needed to hear from her because we just, we love and care about her and we wanted to make sure that she was okay. So I hope that she didn't feel, you know, pressured and felt like people were getting her business because in this time and temperature right now, you know, we are just trying to hold on to everybody that we love because people are, we are losing people left and right. And I'm just really, really glad that she's all right. She said she got a negative COVID test and that Good. what she's dealing with is the long-term COVID effects. So yes, she should be somewhere, um, you know, healing, getting better and, and staying private to herself. And she said she was quarantining, you know what I'm saying? So you know, but the the social media sometimes it could get weird. Little, and, yeah, yeah. Well, but I'll as a sister, I, my sisters would have known. I I find that odd the sister situation because there's no way I'm flatlining, and my my closest family 
does not know where I am. Like, that's just, it's odd to me. I don't know that part, but I'm just happy that she's okay. Well, if there's any more developments, we'll definitely, I think there's, I think there's a lot more we could talk about on this story. So let's, let's take a quick break. And if there's any future developments and maybe we can invite Kelly Price on the show and talk to her when she feels ready to talk about this, because it did everyone, it affected a lot of people. And yes. Her side of the story. Let's take a quick commercial break and we'll be back with more cocktails with Queens after this. Welcome back to Cocktails with the Queens. I just want to acknowledge how good my girls are looking tonight. We we some some nice looking cougars on a Monday. Yes, honey. I bet it is. <sighs> you know what? I think everybody's been getting, yeah. having a little bit of fun in the sun, to be honest with you. You've been playing yeah. the sun. Lisa Ray's been playing the sun. I am. And Selena got next. Yeah. Okay. And I already went to the Bahamas. I'm about to go back oh, down. To the I know that's right. Oh. We have got to plan a, a, a cocktail yes. Aruba. retreat somewhere. We got Aruba. We Listen. keep saying it. We keep saying it. I know. You ain't said nothing but a word, bird. I'm there. I'm going to plan the trip. Yeah, okay. Yes, but we'll travel. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, ladies, I, I got to talk to you about this. This story. Have y'all been watching The View and, 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 and how it's all been going down? The View co-hosts, Andy Navarro and Sunny Hassan, were, who were both <laughs> fully vaccinated, were uh, notified of their positive oh, uh, COVID-19 results minutes before Vice President Kamala Harris was scheduled to walk out on stage for an in-studio interview. Now, both hosts were given this information during the commercial break and were told to leave the studio. According to the latest insider, um, uh, latest update by an ABC insider, Sonny and Anna have actually been cleared to return to the table at the view following a false positive COVID test. Uh, what are your thoughts about this and what went down and what does it say about the test? And I'm sure y'all saw all of the internet. People were thinking it was a big conspiracy theory. Like, you know, Kamala just didn't want to be held accountable by, by, by Sonny and Anna. Did you, do you think it was all that? Or do you think it just was what it was? Vivica, you, what, what do you think? Well, you know, I went through a, false positive uh, right. COVID thing. So, you know, immediately when I saw it went down, that was it's like, you guys, that's false positive. They haven't been getting that many tests, that many weeks in a row that were consistently negative, that midway through the show, bam. And I mean, they came on like gangbusters, like secret service on that, on, you know, <laughs> top of that, you get, get you and you get up. And it was like, what is going on? You know what I mean? But I'm glad to watch it. First I thought, is it nine happened or something that happened? Because it was just like, how do you allow you? You couldn't have went to commercial break and then pull them off and said when they come back. You know, it was the whole theatrics. Oh, this went on live. Yes, Lisa, right? Yeah, uh, it was live. Like he halt, halt. Okay, stop it. That was, it was wrong. That was messed up. So was that a gimmick yeah. to get attention? Was that was that gimmicky? Do you think it that worked, could have been? Honey. We've been talking about it, right? Right, because Joy Joy was like, okay, so I know this is gonna make headlines. I was like. <laughs> Yeah. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. What do you think about people that think that Kamala was trying to uh, th that it was it came from her side that she was going to dodge questions? I think if you go in on the View, you know they're going to get the hard questions. It's, it's not like a softball interview; like they ask hard questions on the View. I don't yeah. think I don't think she was trying to right. dodge questions. She's the Vice President of the United States of America. Yeah. You think the only place she's going to get hard questions? She's going to walk view. outside the door and get a hard question. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, She's not afraid to answer any questions. And anyway, politicians are trained to answer hard questions. That's just what they do. And so. we said that those two ladies was going to ask the hardest questions. So they had to move them out of the way. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> what do they <laughs> those two? They had the hardest questions. Yes. Yeah. I do hate that everything is a conspiracy theory now because everyone has the internet and YouTube and they'll find some, some video to back them up. And everyone thinks they're smarter than the story. Like, well, my sources told me, again, like to piggyback on what y'all all said, she's been through, she's been vetted. She's been a senator and she's asked the yes. hardest questions of everybody else. And she's been through successful presidential and vice presidential debates where she let their ass have it. Okay. Yeah. A fly <laughs> showed up on that. On that. Mm. Attorney, she knows, a, she knows how to give questions and answer them. Exactly. She uh, ain't so, new to this. She true to this. Hello, somebody. Go. Mm -hmm. So speaking of Anna Navarro, who I absolutely love, Donald Trump Jr.'s raggedy ass tried to come for her neck in a tweet about obesity and COVID-19. Now, Trump Jr. stated, given the Anna Navarro news, you know, about her having COVID, I think it's time for a national conversation about the dangers of COVID-19 and obesity. Oh, he, he tried, tried to come for her. Yep. Well, Anna, listen. Anna will not let this fly. Anna replied to his tweet in such a classy yet shady way. Anna tweeted, 
she said, thanks for your concern. I don't have COVID, fortunately for you. Now, if you want to have a conversation about the effects of obesity on people with COVID, your dad is a phone call away, assuming he answers your calls or <laughs> just ask your sister to call him. <laughs> Oh, oh baby. Baby. what are your yes. thoughts and yes. that, 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 was shade. that was the whole tree girl okay the whole what tree fell on his dumb ass and and making fun of people that's obese especially mm -hmm. like what's wrong with them are they retarded how were they raised Right. Who talks about people's um like who, who talks about people in this way? Right? Who <laughs> raised this? Who raised this? Exactly. But how are you talking about obesity when your dad has a wide, wide ass and hips? Doesn't ass. he have a fupa? <laughs> this man ass goes from his back to his ankles. And oh, there's no separation. Because right. he like Kentucky Fried Chicken and McDonald's, he will get down, okay? He's serving people at the White House. When they <laughs> come, you, just, uh, you win a damn championship That's and you come to the White House and he got cold fries and, and filet of fish and Big Macs laid out. And no, he said. Are you, you know, you know he greedy if he didn't had the, 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 the McDonald's down. I came, <laughs> I came with you. I came with you. But she, that was such a classy clap back. And I'm so proud of her, the way she handled that. Because she can talk about his appearance because he hasn't been looking great himself lately. I mean, like a there's speculations about his bread. health too. Well, cocaine is a hell of a drug and it does keep you thin. So, I mean, maybe, you know, allegedly, I mean, there is some talk that he does like to indulge in that us. Uh, that Colombian red. I'm just saying. Well, he looks like a skeleton and borderline um, Norman Bates on that last picture that they just pulled up. The man looked like a psycho. No, bro, they got scary. one of that one when he he tried to do something and somebody had one of him and he's grayed even more and the face Ooh. and the wrinkles. It was like I was like Don Junior. But uh, I ain't got no room to talk about nobody. Okay. <laughs> Anna cleared him and said that your daddy, like your dad, like you're, you're, you're the son that he doesn't love allegedly, and maybe the sister will, you know, he'll pick up the sister's call, but he ain't picking no, up. No, that to be true. I'm telling you that 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 whole tree came and fell on him. Oh, like boy, funny. you didn't you didn't think she was gonna get you for the saying that? <laughs> really? Are you that caught up up your daddy that you didn't know that Anna Navarre was gonna cut you every way I loose? I love her. She is the MVP. All she right. is, and she does it with that cute little uh, accent, really quick, like that. Let me tell you, you know. <laughs> so speaking of cute and ladies that we love, Cynthia Bailey is giving up her peach. Now, the star of The Real Housewives of Atlanta um, announced on social media earlier today that she's leaving the Bravo series after eleven series seasons. Bailey stated, "After much thought and consideration, I have made the very difficult and heartfelt decision not to return for the next season." of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. She also stated, I'm so grateful to have had this amazing journey and I'm anxiously waiting to embark on new adventures. And to her followers, she wrote, most importantly, thank you to my fans. I could not have done it without your blessings, love and support. Without the fans, none of this would be possible. I love and appreciate all of you. Are you surprised that she decided to step down from the Real Housewives of Atlanta? What are your thoughts? No, because her storyline was not exciting. Um, no, Cynthia was a friend of mine. Seriously, I'm serious. Because she was the one that wasn't a part of the drama and shit. You know what I'm saying? Fuck it, y'all. <laughs> <Are you? laughs> no. She didn't have oh, what the right franchise now. is known for. You know what I mean? They're known for the drama. She would get in a little bit, but she wasn't about that life. She, she, and she just got married. I, you know what? Forget y'all. <laughs> I see what you're saying, Lisa Ray. I, yeah, I agree. She, she's no. newly married now. She got some other business opportunities. That may even clash with what they going to do this season. And Ooh, I'm not sure. Because that's a check, too. You know what I'm saying? That's enough it's money. Check. But she like, yeah. yeah, no, my husband got me. And I got some other things. I'm putting faith in me. I'm going to trust in what I got. And I'm going to move forward. So I say bravo to him. Well, yeah, my dad. Go ahead. What do you think, Vivica? My daddy had an old saying, when a chapter is over, learn to put a period on the page, period on it and turn the damn page. And so it's time for her to absolutely turn the page. Cynthia is a classy, former model, beautiful thing. You know, the whole mean girl act on reality shows, it's ran its course. I yep. think Cynthia, if she puts her focus and her direction and back to her beauty, which is where she comes from, she's done the mean girl trick. Y'all did it. Okay, boom. Now what you got next? See, this is the one thing I want to say to about those in the reality world. You have to realize 
while you're there, you are there for a purpose, as we all are when we get a job. However, always make a plan B for when they come and go. Because see, I thought I had heard, allegedly, that she had been fired, that this year, or this season, two people weren't going to get the peach, and she was one of them. And I was like, I honestly was happy. I was like, good, Cynthia, move on. You have so much more to offer. So, you know, next. Thank you. Next. It sucks that the show became so, it, it kind of went a different direction than when it started off because, I mean, it, compared to people that are fighting and not kicking each other in the coochie and wilding out and having affairs and doing all kind of nonsense, you're going to seem boring if you're classy. And yeah, she's that's all it. I'm saying because 11 years, she lasted 11 years without dragging somebody for real. Like, I couldn't do the show because when they asked me, I had to turn it down because I, if I'm dragging somebody, I won't be at work the next day because I wouldn't allow <laughs> you and i i'd have told them i was like it's certain but certain ladies that will get with you if you ask us to come up we like we ain't gonna wait for cut you gonna get cut an uppercut a quick (laughs) ride i I ain't trying to be violent but i'm just letting you know how we go down razor cut you know what i mean (laughs) you know i think guys just on the low like being on reality tv y'all know how it is it's um it's a lot of tension and it causes a lot of anxiety and stress and i i just bet that she probably in her mind was just like listen finally i'm in a place where i can really let this go and walk away from it and you're right baby because like when you get you get an opportunity like this you capitalize on it you you know Mm -hmm. she's grown amazing businesses she has a wine bar she has a line glasses and bags and stuff like she's totally and completely popping and really doesn't need it anymore and i just think it's a mature move and a fun move the fact that she could just be a a man the fact that she could just not have to be on camera and totally be herself however she wants no scrutiny None of that. No anxiety. She's really letting go a lot of anxiety. These shows are yes, absolutely. Listen, me and Claudia both did Celebrity Apprentice. Girl, she talked me off the ledge several times. <laughs> yeah, I was like, Lord, that's five weeks of my life. I will never get back. Girl, I remember you so ran, you, you ran ran me did. Two powers, I was like, do some <laughs> Let's go. I was, I think I was down there before the car even got there. Like, I'm leaving. <laughs> and when people don't realize reality TV is a lot harder than what it looks like. It's mm-hmm. not just cameras following you around. There's this, this thing, things that have to be produced. And sometimes, you know, if you want to be kumbaya, that's great. But people will call you boring. And people will say, this is not what I tuned in for. They want to have it. And sometimes you don't know what's real and what producers are doing and pulling mm-hmm. from there. And listen, 11 years, she, trust me, Cynthia Bailey uh-huh. made a bag. She made a bag. A lot she, of bags. She, she good. She good. And and she now, did have a lot of turn anxiety. Page. And so she did have, it with class. I love Cynthia. Cynthia. And she did. Too. Yeah, she, she she really did. And she'll yeah. be fine. Good Lisa Ray her. and I did a video with her with Jaheen. Yeah. AJ Factor. Yeah. She was stunning. She bad to the bone. She's oh, a girl. girl. The cheekbones, that chocolate skin, baby. Yeah, you know what? She was the mom. Would y'all would y'all be opposed to a cocktails with Queens reality show? No, no, we're gonna try to keep liking each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, yeah, and I know my days, baby. Don't do that. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back. Y'all just shot my idea down. We'll be back. <laughs> Welcome back to Cocktails with Queens. Messy Mondays. What's Monday. up, my, we got my girl Vivica A. Fox, Selena Johnson, and Lisa Ray, who's still celebrating her birthday on vacation. Wow. Go, go. It's my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I want to, um, you're a Libra. I want to just shout out my boyfriend, KJ. It's his birthday today as well. He's a Libra. I love Libras. I have a lot. Happy of birthday, KJ. Happy birthday, KJ. KJ. Okay, I want to read some of the comments we got because they are going ham in the comments. Mm. Uh, Robin says the behind the scenes of reality TV is a whole fool. Gail says Cynthia will be just fine. Howard says these reality shows are toxic. Corin says Selena is speaking facts. And Will says great topics tonight, ladies. And Miki says, Cynthia is going to miss that check. But she's going to have peace. And she will peace. make more money. See, peace. money ain't about happiness. See, you know, money can't buy you happiness. You got to move no on doubt. into something Facts. else. Step into another dimension of your light. Facts. I like money. Ain't nobody got time for that I pressure. I do, too, But you know, you got to decide what kind of job you like and what kind of job would make yes. you hurt other people. And you have mm-hmm. a case. And ain't nobody trying to catch a case behind nobody in no job. Like, 
Well, from that to this, we have the part of the show where we talk about our personal lives, relationships, and how we have overcome obstacles in our own lives. I want to welcome everybody to our Queendom. Queendom. Tonight's topic will focus on the importance of freedom and breaking the stigma attached to women who feel old or unhappy when they reach a certain age. Now, it was inspired by a letter that Beyonce posted to her fans on her 40th birthday. Check out what Beyonce wrote. This is the first time that I really understand what it means to be alive and to live in the moment. Beyonce also wrote, whoever tried to condition women to feel that we are supposed to feel old or unhappy when we turn 40, got it all the way effed up. This has been absolutely the best I've felt in my life. I'm so grateful to be grown. Do you ladies agree with what Beyonce wrote? Yes, Lord. Yes, absolutely. And wait till you get to your 50s. It's so much it more. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, welcome, welcome to the- Go ahead. I'm not trying to look young anymore. I'm not trying to be something that I'm not. I am understanding who I am more and more and I settle with it. I am into maturing in a way that does not take me long to forgive myself for not doing so yesterday. Mm. I'm in a place that is like, teach me, show me and, and express to me. So I know better. So I can do better. That's it. Mm. You don't have that wisdom in your twenties. You don't have that wisdom in your twenties. Uh, Vivica, what do you think about this? You know, honey, I believe being <laughs> fantastic at 40, fabulous at 50, even sexier at 60 and still sizzling at 70 and just <laughs> off of 80. you got many chapters of life to live and if God blesses you to go through each chapter, embrace it, celebrate it, take care of yourself and, 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 and let that wisdom just grow. Life is good. You're not meant to be sad. You know, the older you get, the kids leave and all of that good stuff. And then, you know, whoever you was with, if that didn't work, you can go find you a new friend. Like, you got options, babe. Life is good. Lena, as our youngest lady here, what do you think? Well, I agree. I'm I'm 45. I just turned 45. And um, it was just interesting. Why, it was weird listening to Beyonce talk about being a grown woman and turning 40 mm-hmm. because we have all grown with her since she was 15 years old. You know what I'm saying? And the girl just doesn't age. I mean, she just looked the same. She's forever young, forever beautiful. But when she pinned that note, it just made me go, you better go on, girl. You better be 40 and and like a bad, like bad and like with the two kids and, you know, your husband is banging three. and like everything three. that you, three kids. That's why she got twins. Everything that you've asked for, you have, and she just, she's in her, she's settled. I remember when I turned 40, I felt settled. You know what I'm saying? You feel settled. Now that I'm 45, it's like my reserves of fucks given are now (laughs) in the negative. (laughs) It's getting real weird. Like it'd be on some old, oh no, girl, I don't care about what you're talking about. It'd be so much, what is it? Oh no, I don't care about that. Zero. No, I don't care about nothing. It's, yeah. it's, it's in the negative. Mm-hmm. So, and that to me is the best part of maturing and aging because everything be such a big deal in your 20s and 30s. You be thinking, oh my God. Yeah. You know? yeah. But as you get older, you be like, oh, no, that don't, that don't, that ain't nothing. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. yeah, I'm good. You ladies all, all made great points and, and, and very, very relatable. Um, I need people to stop acting like and, and positioning things like, you know, it's the young against the old, the twenties against the thirties, the thirties again. Like it's so dumb. Like enjoy each level of the of the years, the decade you go through. In my twenties, listen, my booty was higher, my hair was thicker, my eyebrows were fuller, my lips were fuller, and I could see you guys are all blurry brown spots on my screen right now. In my thirties, I started to make a little bit of money and learn like about love and responsibility. In my forties, yeah, I got a couple gray hairs where I don't want to even share with y'all, but like, it's fun there too. Like I'm more secure. And it's like, if people stop insulting people, like when they, I hate when they use age as an insult and they only do it to women. You don't ever hear, oh, you all 40 year old single man. That's, yeah. that's like sexy, but You're we- are going uh, bald ass. You know what I'm saying? Well, they don't say that. <laughs> yeah. 
we don't say it. We, we, we got to stop doing okay. it to each other. There's nothing wrong with being this age, and we have to embrace it because there's going to be a time when we're in our 60s and 70s. We're going to wish we were back in our 40s and 50s. And, like, mm. stop, young people, it is not an insult. Stop trying to insult us by saying you old. If you're lucky, like the lady said, you'll get to where we are. And if you're really lucky, maybe you'll look half as good as this Woo! panel up in here is what yes, I'm just trying to Because isn't this <laughs> funny, girls? When you watch Golden Girls, they were golden girls like grandmas. Gray hair. Now, yeah. our golden girls is not. Look at J-Lo when she did the Super Bowl and she was doing that poll. It was like, this is 50 now. Yeah. This exactly. is 50. You know Angela Bassett is our golden girls. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> she <laughs> bad. Viola Davis. These are bomb. What, real, real quick before we go to break, what do y'all feel differently from now, from your 20s? Like, what's, what's the major difference between, like, as far as, like, effects of it, you know, getting older or... What, what, what is the difference that you can like sum it up in a sentence? More like, maturity, more what? direction, more power. Oh, certainty. Like I'm not, um, I'm, I can't be moved. Like back then I was undecisive, you know, I was, oh, indecisive. indecisive. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm certain on stuff now. I think we got Vivica frozen right now or she's giving us a fabulous pose. Okay. Like, <laughs> she it's is like, like modeling. Oh. Okay, look at her. She like. That's all doing. Let's pose. Let's pose. The way to freeze. That's the way. <laughs> that is the way. <laughs> Y'all are so bold. Y'all are so bold. So Vivica is telling us, "I'm gonna freeze in this moment. I'm not gonna age anymore from here on out." That's what. That okay, what's there you go. Make it right okay. for it, Claudia. I'm trying. I will say this: in my twenties, I, I was I, I, people pleasing. I still do that a little bit, but um. You know, less more unapologetic. Like, hey, I'm we all do the people pleasing because we know now it's it's easier to just to turn the other cheek and go, "This is not going to bother me." So I can kill you with kindness. It's okay. And people pleasing is good as as long as you're the first person on your list that you please. Please yourself first, and Come then now. right. I'm preaching tonight. Y'all dropping, dropping bombs today. Y'all, y'all just words okay. all over the place. So okay. let's take a quick commercial break so we can have our Vivica rejoin the conversation and we'll be back. We have plenty more show coming back when we return from this break. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Cocktails with Queens. I think we're having some, uh, oh, do we have her back? We have Vivica back. Okay, we are back. We have some, listen, live TV. We in a streaming, streaming era. So we have her back. We have her back. Okay, let's get back into the uh, hot topics. Apparently, Shaquille O'Neal doesn't want any connection to his celebrity status. Now, during a recent interview, he said, these celebrities are going freaking crazy and I don't want to be one. I denounced my celebrity, celebrity-ness today. I'm done with it. He also added, all my life, everyone probably gets stereotyped, but us celebrities... We get stereotyped because most of these celebrities are out of their mind. I don't do that. I'm a regular person that listened, followed his dreams, and made it. What are your thoughts on what Shaq said? Have ever have any of you ever wanted to detach yourself from your celebrity? Selena Johnson, what do you think about this? Uh, I don't know. Um, there are moments that... Um, that are unfair that celebrities have to deal with that um, other that people who are not celebrities don't have to deal with um, like prejudgment. I hate prejudgment. That's, that's the one thing that wears me thin, but nothing has um, I'm a, I'm like an introverted extrovert. So I don't really go out in the world as much, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm very introverted. So nothing has been to the point where I feel like, Oh, I don't want to be a celebrity anymore. So I don't know, but you know, to each his own. His experience is his experience. Honey, I love mine because let me tell you something. I'm not <laughs> uh, A-list, so I'm not, you know, a Halle Berry, a Britney Spears that, you know, they have followed me around where I got paparazzi outside my house and I may run over a photographer and they want to take a case and, you know, sue me or whatever. I'm not that, but right. I'm just famous enough to be in that group that when you talk about the the Vivica Foxes and the Regina Kings and the Neil Longs, my name is in there as well. You know what I mean? And so it's still into, you think it's just black Hollywood, but then when you go somewhere and you feel like, oh, this is cool because white people is here or Asian right, right. people, you know what I mean? And then they go, can I take a picture with you? And you're like, who, me? And you'd be like, oh, shit. you know, cool. <laughs> I like that shit. Like, I really do. You know what I'm saying? And then when I see a line, I'd be like, I ain't standing in that line. You better go tell them I'm here. 
Okay. And then you only surround how many people do you have, which one is like 15, you know? Okay. <laughs> Side eye. I'm a side eye what Shaq is saying. You can't tell me all the perks that come with your success that you've had, getting the key to the city and all these, all the yeah, girls the era, getting all these so endorsements. You love Shaq. Listen, Shaq is like, he is such a charismatic person, but I, you could tell from that smile, he loves all that comes with it. And I think people that say, listen, there does come a lot of responsibility, right? You don't get away with things. You mess up on a, a tweet, it's going to make a blog and you're going to be canceled for that day and all that stuff. But the, I think the good outweighs the bad for a lot of celebrities because there are a lot of perks that come. Like you said, Lisa Ray, you ain't standing no line. And when you get there, you're going to be a, bring your plus 15 and they're probably not going to. Well, I was just playing about the 15, but it'd be about a good five or six, seven, eight, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, you don't take it for granted. You know what I mean? Because I'm definitely, you know, one of those that's like, you know, if I'm in a city and I'm visiting a place, you know what I mean? I want to patronize the place. I, I definitely want to pay to patronize the place. But you're right, Claudia, sometimes just for coming in and supporting them, they feel like, no, if you could take a picture to let everybody else know that you're supporting us, that you ate here and you liked us, then, you know, we're going to comp your meal. And it's like, oh my God. And I wasn't expecting that. So it's like, absolutely. Of course I take a picture. And then everybody in the kitchen come out and then you're like, all right, cool. You know? So, you know, I like that shit, you know? <laughs> of course. I just want society to start propping up the, the celebrities that are more positive. The ones that are actually good examples and whatever good example meets, means to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, because there are people I don't even know these that. social media girls that's on these reality shows. I'd be like, that's who? What yeah. she do? I, I, it's I, I, too, it's too much. Maybe famous, though. I'd really be like, what she do? Yeah. What does she do? You know what I mean? And I, you know, if you don't do nothing besides what you do, what you do, I, you ain't doing nothing. <laughs> you know? Well, I, yeah, I, I don't, I feel bad. I don't be knowing a lot of people too, but it's just so much going on. Like it's so many Netflix shows and Hulu and prime. And it's so many people that are famous that we don't even know that they're famous, you know, or I guess if you want to call it famous or, you know, whatever you call it, but people are working everywhere in the limelight. You know what I'm saying? So it's almost hell. Everybody famous nowadays. You could just be a, a one. You have two, three million followers on Instagram and you're famous. So I don't know. The definition of celebrity to me is the the the, the this measuring stick to be a celebrity is is definitely is is definitely not what it used to be in the '90s and early 2000s. If you were on a TV show, a movie, had a song, or you were a model, a real model, like a, no shade to Instagram, but a fashion model, like those Cynthia. were the categories of celebrity. Right, and now you can really do a TikTok video, and that's that's nowadays celeb. celeb. That's like 2021 version of celebrity, I guess. We got to take a quick commercial break. We're going to get our girl Vivica Fox back on the show. We'll be right back with more Cocktails with Queens after this. All right, ladies, welcome back to the show. All right, let's get into this topic because it's about sex and orgasms. And I know we're going to have a spicy conversation about this. Okay, ladies, have you ever wondered what a man desires more than an orgasm? Because according to a study published in the Journal of Sex and Marital... What did you say? His dick <laughs> Lisa Ray. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean you know you're me. That's what they like. Hell yeah. no. Yeah, we got to be able to come back. Perfect. Just in time, baby, because for the foolish. <laughs> Save up for the cancellation. Okay. Just okay. Wait, uh, wait, 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 you know. Okay. We talking about what a man wants more or desires more than an orgasm. So according to this study from the uh, Journal of Sex and Marital Therapy, uh -huh. the majority of men, 95% to be exact, say that feeling desired by their female partner is important to their sexual experiences. And 88% say there are things their partners can do to help them feel more desired. Studies have also shown that feeling desired is important for women's sexual arousal, but sexual desire has been much less studied amongst men. It's kind of new. And a few studies have explored men's feelings about their desired by their, par their female partners. 
What are your thoughts on this study that say that men are saying they want to be desired more than an orgasm? I don't know about that. I feel like they want to orgasm over everything. What do y'all think? Right. I mean, because we talk about sexual predators that just want to pop off. You know what I mean? We <laughs> talk about sexual predators that just had so many different women that it, they don't even have a face because they just want to pop off. So now all of a sudden you want to be desired. I don't know. You know what I mean? Maybe when you get with that one, you have to feel desired because you ain't you gave up all the other ones. You know what I mean? So maybe that's true. I, I wouldn't, you know, I would love, I'm loving to be desired too, because in relationship, you have to feel like that's a mental, a mental thing that helps with the physical thing. You know what I mean? It's like, you got to get me here. I got to feel the desire, the want, the need, the feel, the, you know, all of that to feel like, oh, well, well, come on and get right. you. Y'all making me hot. I just, I just, <laughs> well, you know, I, you know what I feel like? I feel like, um, I feel like women have leveled the playing fields. And uh, I think that, you know, now mm -hmm. women are getting it popping on their own, you know, whereas men is just about bussing and going about their business. Now as women, it's just bussing, like bussing. bussing and going on about their business. Yeah. So now men are like, well, wait a minute. What about, so we don't, you don't want to hold me afterwards, you know? <laughs> so now we're so, you know, confident within the way that we move i.e megan the stallion and cardi b and Nicki minaj and you know all these women who are sexually comfortable and able to be um a type women you know what i'm saying now men feel like we don't need them and you know they like big kids you know they like big babies so they now the the playing fields are level it ain't about just women needing to feel wanted you know now they need to feel wanted because we're treating sexual activity like they do now. You know what I'm saying? In most cases, a lot of women, you know, are like, listen, you know, <laughs> I can get it popping just the same wet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you know what? that's a that's a great point. And 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 you made me reconsider my original stance. I, you are 1000 percent correct, because now we've before. We had we had all these stipulations, not till marriage, or you gotta be with me and a yep. commitment. Now girls are like, he ain't shit, but <laughs> he's popping in the bedroom. I'm gonna just he's a D in G, a D in glass, break in case of emergency. And they're feeling yeah. some men are feeling a kind of way about, like you said, mm -hmm. hey, you gonna call me? They, they, yeah, wait a minute. Like, call me. You gonna call me, right? You're right. right about that. Yeah. Yeah. Have y'all have y'all ever done that to a guy? You made him feel insecure and, and boomeranged him, where you kind of flipped the script on him. Where they always assume that we want every guy assumes that we they we sleep with them that we want to marry them. Like they just we they, we would never leave them. Have y'all ever like flipped it on a guy where he had his head all messed up and, and he felt insecure about his place? Girl, every guy I've been with. <laughs> Somebody called, turn on the TV. I can't do this no more. I mean, you know, they call me like, you know what? I'm so sorry. Yeah, I know you are. You know? <laughs> so See, she the reason why they come out. Can you hold me? It's her. She the one. Uh, <laughs> How about you, Selena? Have you ever done that? Uh, Pre-marriage, I had, I have, I've had to do it a couple of times um, because of men's ego you know, they be thinking they popping. And sometimes you got to let them know, no, I'm actually popping too. So sometimes it's like, after it's over, you got to ask him, <laughs> like after you sleep with him in, you be like, what you finna do? <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the question that come after that's you. What you finna do? Finna do, what okay. You, what you finna do? <laughs> yeah. Did you say if a lady asks you what you finna do, she need it's really a code for saying, get out of my house. I gotta, I got I gotta make some phone calls. I gotta work. You in my way. Thank you for the it wasn't good. And she's she like, you know what? I don't, don't want to have to go through this again. So let me just nip this in the bud right now. I'm sleepy. Huh. <laughs> if she say any of them things, you yeah. fell off. Just get your little dilly dallies and go on about your way. Get your head in your mouth. And and don't run your mouth and put my name. Like don't, don't, don't claim me. It didn't happen. That part. That part. Because that's another thing. Men be thinking we gonna run around and tell. Let me tell you something. Women be having stuff to lose too. We be on the el, the even lower. We don't want nobody knowing nothing. 
And we men are like bitches too. They talk to their boys. They run their mouths okay. like running water. So it's mm-hmm. like, bro, you ain't the only one talking, okay? And, and, and talk. even in 2021, they still lying on their D. <laughs> Maybe P, you didn't secure. Yep, yep. That that has happened to me, and it made me feel like, oh, let me say something. You know what I mean? And then it made me go, you know what? If I say something and it's going to go to a back and forth and um, it ain't even that damn important. And it, it just, it recently happened to me a couple of months ago on here. And it was like, he said, what? I remember that. I remember that story. Somebody had said something. Who was it again? Give us a hand. I'm, 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 I will say, I will call him still a friend. One of my friends. And it was like, I remember. Nigga, come on now, really? Remember it on this show. I can't remember his name, but I remember but You want to put me on notch of your belt and make you look good? Hey, it did. <laughs> it did, so go ahead. What, what was, was it? Thinking. Was it the game? Ooh. Oh. I think it was, was it him? It Ooh. was, it was, I, maybe it wasn't him. I don't want him to think I said it was when it was. No, but no, somebody like that, somebody in that realm. It Some, was somebody. Somebody. Cause I know you was like, I'm gonna call them. Yeah, I know. Right? When I was 15, the first guy I kissed, like I, I just wanted to like learn how to kiss, and he wasn't that cute. He had a very long head. I kissed him, and then he told everybody, and I denied him. I lied and said, uh, I lied and, and made him look dumb. Like he tried to even claim on a kiss. Isn't that so <laughs> whack? Cause you don't want nobody that's gonna kiss and tell. Like, come on, cause if I wanted to kiss and tell, we would have still been together, and we'd be telling it. You know, it plus, wasn't nothing to it. So keep it in the closet. Plus his head was way too long. He looked like a banana. All right, we got to go. Oh, oh, uh, we have, okay. make, sure, make sure you I stick know around. What talking about. I mean, because you're talking about something long with a head. I, you know, I would think you would like that, but, I, you know, I got it. Oh, back. my God. I'm with you. You're, I'm you're with you. Me. Stick Don't around. The book of Sean is up back. Get some intellectual programming after this. The book yeah, I got to go. It's my birthday still. Bye. Right. Bye. <laughs>